this in, in real life, it will make your life easier to understand it, okay? I stopped sharing, so now this is in, in general, this is one sensor or button, okay? Where you put it on the, on, the, on the wall, where you can control scenes. So normally it's like that. This is the whole one. Okay, this is the whole one. It will be on the on the wall. And then you can control scenes from here or push buttons from here. When you divide it, okay, this is the plastic interface for the button itself. It can come in black or white or whatever. Okay, so this is not really uh, into the electronic port. And then you have this, and you can divide this. Now you have this. This is the application module. Okay, and this is the BCU and BCU bus coupling unit device. And this is the one connected to the KNX side because it's connected to the KNX side using this interface. This one. We'll talk about this in the installation, but then you put the cabling in here, and this is in the wall, and then you attach this one, this application module to this one by this socket. You see the socket? And this is the physical external interface. When you attach it like that, now we have the unit, and then this is a plastic port where you can put it together or remove it depending on on, on the on the uses that you need. So in in the cases like that, it's detachable. So you can see that this this unit, the application module, is can be detached from the BCU. In other units, like let's say actuators or units like that, this is one unit. This one is an IP interface. It will be in the DB. It's not. It will not be. For user to view, but will be in the DB. We'll talk about that. Like relays, like dimmers, actuators in general. Normally, you cannot detach, so you can see there is not an easy power to detach. So the application module and the BCU, the bus coupling unit area, is both on one on one unit. You cannot detach. Okay. Let's share the screen again. We're back. So this simply, you can find out, you can see that, so the unit you can divide normally and on the, from the KNX side as a bus coupling unit, and then a socket, a small socket called a physical interface, physical external interface, and then the application module. And the physical external interface doesn't have any logic, by the way, it's only a socket to make sure that the application module and the BCU are detached together and gives the power from the cable to the application module itself. That's it. However, the BCU is the one responsible for most of the logic of the KNX port. So the version here called, we call it in KNX a system profile. So the first system profile, okay, was system one, then system two slash seven came, and then system B came. The difference between the systems or among the systems is very unique. The bulk version, so the, the systems has a version, and in KNX we call this version a mask version or device descriptor type zero. Okay, this one. So when they say that the mask version or device descriptor type zero is system one, you know that they're taking talking about system one or two slash seven or B. System one is not used anymore; it's too old. But most you will find in 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 the current devices system two slash seven or system B. And the difference between two slash seven and system B is mostly in the RAM and capability of the microcontroller. However, the difference between system one and those two systems is huge. So the maximum number of group objects in system one it was 12, in system two plus uh, slash seven is 254, and then it's more than 60, 65, uh, 56,000 devices, 56,000 devices on system B. So in system B have more memory that can allow to take more devices than system two slash seven or system one. System one was the basic one. Okay, what is group objects? We'll find out in the next session that group objects are parameters and systems to allow interface in the programming itself. So take it for now like a variable or something like a programming unit. So if you have more memory, you can have more programming unit. If you have less memory, then you can have less group objects and less programming unit. 
So in system B, you have more than system two, two slash seven. Then in, in those new systems, three new things was, were, uh, were uh, introduced. First, you have the interface objects, and this is also programming hierarchy or structure to allow different manufacturers to interface devices together. We'll talk about them in details. But for now, you have to know that there's something called interface objects, making that if I'm putting a button, let's say, from uh, Gira and control it, and I wanted to control a relay from, let's say, Schneider or ABB, there should be an interface object, a programming unit, telling me that this one can interface with this one. This one can talk to this one. Okay. In this our case, if it's a non-op, then there is an interface object, let's say, with one bit, uh, one bit size, to give take a non from the button and send it to the relay itself to allow the lights to be on. Okay. So there's an interface object that was int introduced on those new systems, and then there's also again a serial number and the access control. Let's talk about serial number and access control in more details. So we'll talk about the on-off relays and the dimming and the motor functions. Okay. The behavior of the, of the dimming in KNX is very simple. So you have a dimmer, which is connected to a dimmable load. So this is your dimmer connected to a dimmable load, like a LED or something. Dimmable load meaning that I can control the intensity of the light. So it can increase or decrease depending on my usage. And then you have a keypad or a button like that, okay, where you are using this button to control the dimmer. So the behavior is very simple. If I'm holding the dimming for a long time, as long as I'm holding, then the dimming is increasing or decreasing based on my the time I'm holding the dimmer. Once I release my finger from the button, then the dimming stops. Okay, and if I press a short press like that, then if the dimmer is on, it goes off. If the dimmer is off, it goes on. So very simple. If I want to increase the dimming or release the dimming, and I use a longer press, I keep pressing until I reach the dimming uh, value that I need, and then I remove my, my finger. It's like that. If I want to turn it off, I just do a, press, uh, a short press. If I, do, if I want to go uh, do it uh, to make it on, I do a longer press. It will, be, it will come back with the value that I left it on. So if, if it was dimmable for 50%, it will come back on 50%. If I want to decrease the dimming again, then I keep pressing again, I find that the dimming is, in, is, is, in, uh, is decreasing. And this is what you are seeing here. So if I have here the smart dimmer, if I start long operation, and let's say the dimming was on zero value, if I'm doing long operation, so I'm, I'm keeping my finger on the button, so you can see that the dimming is increasing. Then once I move my finger, okay, so I stop dimming, the value is like that, خلاص. so it's, the value is fixed on this. So the light is on, on this value. If I want to switch it off, I do a switch off using a short press. Now it's zero. If I press a short press again, it will go on to the value that I left it on, okay, and after some time, if I want to press to decrease it, I start also doing again a longer press, so it starts to be decreased. And that's it. This is the doing function. And this will do practically on the course and in the practical in the practical exam as well. The function of the dimmer itself, you can see that there is there is this is a part of the KNX. When you see the PCU, then you know this is a part of the KNX here. The okay, next part is here. Okay, so this is the BCU, and its function is to take telegrams and commands from the KNX system, pass it from the PEI, the physical external interface, to the application module. And the application module got the functions related to the load. So if it is a relay, I find here uh, relays to do the on and off. If it's dimming, then its device is doing the dimming. And in the dimming, you have always two parts part for the dimming and part for on-off, because I can just switch off or switch on the relay itself. So here, this is a relay that's connected to the dimmer itself. And from here, I can switch on and off the dimmer itself. And from here, from shift register and uh, converter, I can just pass parameters and pass voltage that will allow the dimming, the dimming bar to be the light to go on to a specific value or off to a specific value, okay? So this is the load. 
export, and this is the KN export, the one on the left. Okay. You don't need this for the exam, by the way, but it's trying here to give you an, an idea how the device looks like. In the shutters, when shutters, I'm talking about curtains, about maybe even garage doors, may, uh, blinds, uh, uh, anything related to this movable part like that. Then this is a, di a different way. In the shutters, similar to the dimming, but to an extent. So in the shutters, if I'm pressing the button for long press, it means to the shutter that go up or go down or open and close in, ca in case of a garage door as an example. So long press, it will start going up or going down. If I remove my finger, it will keep. If it is going up, it will keep going up. Okay, if it's down, it keep going down. Not like the dimmer. When, when I remove my finger from the dimmer, then it stops. Here, no, it will keep going up or down, opening or close because you have a travel, a travel area, a travel period for that motor to go, okay? And if I press short to press, it has two actions. In case the motor is working, I mean the, the blinds or the curtains are going up or going down and in movement, when I press here, the movement stops. And if it's not in movement, if it's already stand still, when I remove, push here a small, a short to press, it will move up or down with a specific step. So not going up or down all the way, but specific, a specific step, small step, okay? So again, I have the shutter or the curtain, and then I keep short pressing, it's moving up, I move my finger, it will keep moving up until it open. If I want to pause it in the middle, I don't want to want it to open or close the entire uh, area, and want to pause it in the middle, then I, during the movement, I do a, a short press. If it's already open or, or closed, and I want to open it or reverse direction, but in small steps, then I keep pressing short presses on the button. Okay, good. There is also something here. Normally the motor itself has some parameters telling it that when you reach a limit control, when you reach your limit, stop moving. Otherwise, it will just be rolling like that. So in the motor itself, not ready to can export, but in the motor itself, there is a limit switch in it that making it stop when it reaches its maximum, meaning that if the garage door is open, then it will detect that the garage door is open and it will stop moving anyway. Even if you are giving, still giving it uh, power and giving command to still moving up, خلاص, it will stop. And vice versa, if it's down, then it will not move down again. Okay? So in your configuration, you can configure time in the parameters, the KNX to tell it how long should 